Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about encapsulation in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will explain what is encapsulation in general and moving further, we will see how we can implement encapsulation in Python. And finally, to sum up this session, we will take a look at a few Python encapsulation examples. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, if you are new here, Subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now without any further ado, let us understand encapsulation in Python. So what exactly is encapsulation? Encapsulation refers to wrapping up of data under a single unit and it is the mechanism that binds code and the data that it manipulates. Another way to think about encapsulation is it is a protective shield that prevents the data from being accessed by the code outside this shield. And in this, the variable or the data of a class is hidden from any other class and can be accessed only through any member function of the own class in which that they are declared. Now to understand this, we have an analogy that we can relate to. So the example of a medical capsule where the drug is always safe inside the capsule. Similarly, through encapsulation, the methods and variables of a class are very well hidden and safe. And one more example would be a vending machine, guys. So what we see is a vending machine, but there are several other operations or processes going inside the vending machine to give us the product that we want. So those products and the operations that are happening inside the vending machine, you may call them hidden variables or data of the vending machine that is being hidden from any other person who can see it from the outside. So that is one more example that we can relate to when we are talking about encapsulation. Then talking about the benefits of encapsulation. So the very first benefit is the data hiding. So what happens is a user will not have no idea about the inner implementation of the class and even user will not be aware of uh, how the class is storing values in the variables. They will only see what we want them to see, which is basically passing the value to a method and then the variables are getting initialized with that value. So they don't really know what's going inside the class and that is one benefit that we have for encapsulation guys. The other benefit is the increased flexibility. So we can make the variables of the class, you know, according to how we want them to use in case we just want it to be a read only method or you know it can be write only depending on what we require then we have the reusability benefit that we have it basically improves the reusability and it becomes easy to change with new requirements so let's take a look at a few differences between abstraction and encapsulation so we know that encapsulation is known for wrapping the code and the data for necessary information whereas abstraction basically provides the abstract or you know it it gives you the most necessary details in the data and it is only the useful details that you will be seeing in abstraction but in encapsulation the whole code and all the necessary information everything is wrapped together while abstraction is mainly focusing on what the method is going to be or whatever the function is going to be encapsulation on the other hand is basically focusing on how the implementation will work on any given method or variables then the abstraction when it comes to complexity abstraction is basically hiding everything from you and it just gives you like an abstract picture of how this is the only useful information that you need from your data but on the other hand encapsulation is hiding the internal working and it is basically helping you so that you can change it later as well now let's just talk about how encapsulation works in python guys so in python plain attributes are used in order to achieve encapsulation. This is also done with the help of naming conventions through which we are able to distinguish between protected and private members. So we can add a double score in front of the variable and any function name. It can hide them when accessing them from out of the class or out of the scope of the class. Basically what I want to say here is Python does not really have any real private methods. But we can use this double score naming convention by which we can make them private methods sort of and also when we use double underscore we can still access the private variables but we have to do that with certain techniques so let's take it up to Jupyter notebook guys and we'll try to learn it from a few examples that we have 
So I have this Jupyter notebook open over here. So what we'll do is we'll make a few functions. First of all, let me just create a class guys. So I'll just create a class and Eureka. Now inside this first of all, I want to define a function. So I'll start with init function guys and self over here. Now what I'll do is I'll try to make a few variables. So first of all, let's just say I'll make one variable. Let's say course is equal to make it as let's say Python programming course and let's just talk about the technology as well so this one a simple example that i want to show you guys so i'll just write it as let's say python now i have one more function let's say and this is like i'll make it as course name and inside this let's see i want to return the self dot course and I want to return it with self dot technology. Right now, what I'll do is I'll make a object for this class Edureka. And using this object, I am going to get the course. And using this only, I'll call the tech as well, not the technology. And last but not least, we'll call the method course name as well. So let's see what the output is. We have a course name error guys so it takes positional arguments and one is actually given over here so let's see what the error really is all right so i forgot to write self over here so let's see now if it runs properly so we have a python programming course and python all right so let's try to comment this part so we have and let's try to comment this as well Right, so we'll add a print statement to this and for this as well. Now what the output is, all right. So, so we're getting the output as we want. So this is basically what the output is or we can just put this in so in the print statement as well. So this is how you normally access any given variables that you have inside any function guys. So I have a class over here, which is Edureka. So let's see if I add a underscore for this tech. So what really happens guys, all right? Will I be able to, all right? So I'm getting the course perfectly because it does not have any underscore over here. What really happening with the other one is Edureka object has no attribute tech, all right? So let me just try it as this. So using the naming convention, I'm getting that. So if I add a double underscore and try to get the same output, I am getting a attribute error guys, which is saying that Edureka object has no attribute tech, but I have a attribute written it like that. So when I'm trying to access this variable outside the scope of my class, I'm not actually getting any values. So if I let's say change this as well, I'm still getting the error guys. So what now I'm going to do is I'm going to explain you what name mangling actually is. So this is one technique by which we'll be able to access this uh, private variable that we have made. So in Python mangling is used for private class members which are designed in such a way that we just give them a name with two underscores and no more than one trailing underscores. So what I'm going to do is I'll just use the name mangling and basically what happens is we can check the attributes. So what will happen? I'll add one underscore and name of my class and it will be good to go guys. So this is how I access my private members in the class and there is one more method that we can use which is the getter and setter methods and if you have any questions guys, you can mention them in the comments. So basically what I did was I declared a class and then inside a function I declared two variables out of which I made one variable private so that I'll not be able to use it in outside the class. So which actually happened when I tried to call this variable using the same name that I have mentioned, I could not do it, but then I did the name mangling. This is how I was able to access the variables. So now I'm going to talk about the getter and setter methods that we have in Python. I'll just explain it with an example guys. All right guys, now what I'll do, I'll just copy this whole code so that will not make any hindrance in our next code. So I have all these functions already. So I'll make one more function, which is going to be my getter function. So this is, let's say, get tech function self. 
and inside this I will return so now inside this I'll, I'm going to return self dot tech and now I'm going to make another function which is a setter method and with set they're going to be another variable let's say a there's going to be another variable and for this let's say we're going to use uh, it as let's say c because we're going to use it for a course value or we'll just name it as let's say t only and self dot tech is equal to t so now we are done and we have our object also so after this we are going to call the setter method so which is set tech inside this will provide some value let's say let's just say machine learning and after this we call our ob dot get tech all right guys so i think this is it so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the example with getter and setter in python so for that i'm going to take a class again name it as adireka once again and after this what i'll do is i'll define my init function it will make it similar to the function that we have made before and now after this uh, i'll take one variable let's say let's call it as course again and for this course let's see i want to change it to machine learning course and again this uh, private method tech for now let's call it as python we'll change it later with setter and getter and we'll make another function let's say course and inside this self and we're going to return the values like uh, self dot course and after this we'll append this value and let's add a hyphen also to make it look a little good and after this we'll append the value with tech guys and now i'll define my setter function which is set tech set followed by two underscores and then tech and inside this i have self and a variable that i'm going to provide all right so after this i will write it as self and tech is equal to whatever i give it the value and then i'll make my getter function so which is get tech self all right once again i did and we will return the self dot tech and after this i'll make my object call my class and with the object i'll call my set function and let's say if instead of python i want to write it as let's say scikit-learn which is also a library that we use in python for machine learning basically so basically what i did was machine learning course scikit-learn so instead of python it is scikit-learn now so let's say if i don't call my set a function what happens so then i have python over there so if i want to know what the private variable is actually so i'll just write it as get tech all right so i'll get it whatever the private variable is i'm actually getting that value so now with this we have come to the end of the session guys if you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to adireka for more exciting tutorials and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates on adireka and we have a full tutorial on object oriented programming concepts that we have in python such as inheritance then we have abstraction polymorphism as well so do give it a look i'll give you the link of that session in our description box below also check out edureka's python programming certification program the link is also given in the description box below thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more Happy learning!